Hello to everyone. It's really a pleasure to be part of Dapcon 29. My name is Salvador Mendoza, and I'm a security researcher of MetaVSQ, and I'm proudly a member of Ocelot Offensive Security Team. Today, I'm going to talk about the Pinata attack or Pin Automatic Tri attack regarding EMV technology. So, let's start with the agenda for today. We're going to have an introduction to terminology. Also, we're going to talk about the EMV transaction flow, which basically is how the card data goes from the terminal to the bank institutions and how it's processed. After that, we're going to talk about the inadequate implementation uh, regarding this attack and how someone could exploit it. Finally, we're going to have a demo implementing an internal tool uh, named Alma. And after that, we're going to have some conclusions regarding this research. Let's analyze some terminology that we're going to use throughout this presentation. Some of them are going to be very important for the demos, for example, or to, un to understand a little bit more in depth how, how the issue, how the bad practices are implemented. So let's start with the secure element, OSE, which is basically responsible to sign the transaction or to keep the secrets in the card, on the physical card, to sign the transactions when, you know, when it's processing it. The CVM is the cardholder verification method, which could be different, right? It could be that you verify the transaction by signing it, or uh, it could be by uh, pin entry mode. Also, we have the APDU, the Application Protocol Data Unit. is the protocol in charge uh, to communicate or to handle the communication between the card and the terminal. Also, we have the ICC or Integrated Circuit Card. Uh, we know these cards as well as smart cards, for example, but we're going to talk specifically to the EMV transactions. That's to, to, be, to be clear. The PRC is the pin retry counter, one of the most important terms that we're going to use during this presentation. And also the ARC or ARPC, Authorization Response Code how the bank institution responds back to the transaction to the terminal. The EMV contact payment is one of the most common and secure technology that we implement and use every day to make transactions because it implements a secure element. And the secure element is in charge to sign the transactions or to sign the challenge that the terminal is sending to the card. Basically, contact payment is when we insert the card into a terminal and we leave it there until the transaction finishes. Sometimes the user will require to insert or to enter the PIN for the, for the transaction and sometimes it will require to sign a paper to verify the transaction. When the card is inserted into the terminal, it's going to be detected, and after that, it's going to be reset. Uh, it's going to be the list applications, and it's going to be different steps until the transaction is complete. During these steps, one of the most important is if the transaction is going to be processed online or is going to be processed offline mode. It, it will depend on different factors, and of course, it's going to depend on the verification method. If we take a look into uh, different details regarding the terminal and card communication, we can see in the protocol phases how, how this transaction um, goes through. For example, we have the card authentication, we have the cardholder verification method, and also we have the transaction authorization. It's going, it's going to be the last phase uh, after the verification in the transaction. When the terminal starts sending comments to the card, the card must answer back for that specific comment. But for example, let's say if the terminal sends a comment that is not properly right, the card will answer back that that comment uh, was, wasn't right. 
So the terminal is going to prepare a new command and send it back to the car. So basically is when you are typing something to a terminal and in every command you are getting a, a response back. It's the same thing with the terminal and the car. It's it's like a sending a command and getting a response back very quickly. One of the most important parts in this protocol phase is the card holder verification method that we're going to implement for the Pinata attack. Many people think that the communication between the card and the terminal is encrypted, but it's not, sadly it's not. And they use the ISO 7816, which basically many other technologies use it as well such as NFC, for example. NFC implements the application APD layer uh, to communicate with a terminal as well. And also the same technology that we use for our cell phones, this chip that you put in the cell phone, it communicates implementing the same APDU layer with the, with, the, with the cellular phone. So it's not encrypted, the communication, but it need to follow a format. And we're going to analyze what is the format, uh, what is the APDU command format, and also what is the APDU answer format. So how they know how to answer back and which format is going to be. And take a look into the different details or parameters inside of this, of this uh, APDU protocol. So let's analyze one of the most important parts in the APDU protocol, which are the commands and the responses. So basically, uh, let's start with the APDU command, which is um, a little bit different from the car response. We have a header and we have a body. And the body, we have the length of the command and also we have the data from the command or the command basically. And in the response, we have the data and we have the trailer. The trailer basically is um, the status of the previous command from the terminal, which basically that it tells if the command was executed correctly or if there is something wrong, e something in, 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 in the answer um, is going to be in the status of this trailer. So um, to have a better idea, let's analyze the APDU command example. This uh, one of the is going to be the first command that the terminal sends to the car. Uh, if we analyze it separately, we can see what is the class, what is the instruction. Uh, we have parameter one, parameter two, and we have the command length. And after that, we have the command that is going to be sent to the card. And in the same way, we have the card response, uh, which basically is the data, and after that is the trailer. So in this particular example, we have the data, and the trailer is going to be 90, 0, 0 which basically is that the previous command was executed correctly. So uh, to analyze the data, for example, in this response, we, we need to decode it. To decode this data, uh, we need to use the TLD decoding method. Or we can use the emvlab.org decoding uh, tool, which basically you put a APDU and it's going to break apart each um, each uh, comment or each answer that, that you put in the code, which is very uh, straightforward. For this type of um, responses or comments, we can analyze very quickly to see what is inside uh, of the APDU protocol. Very essential to understand the process and to understand the communication between the terminal um, and the card. As security researcher, sometimes you need to find a way to test some implementations. But sometimes, even when you have the idea, you need to design or create hardware or software depending on what you want to test. Uh, this was the case when we need to design a tool to analyze the APDU protocol between the contact card or EMV card and the terminal. Uh, because uh, we know that these security cards, but one thing is what they mention, saying that they are security cards, and the another thing, or very differently, is the implementation. So 
we decided to create or to design the ELMA technology. This ELMA tool is a EMV laboratory middleware assistant, which basically is what it does. It assists um, to analyze the EMV protocol between the terminal and the, and the car. And we're going to go into details about how we design this hardware and what are the capabilities that we have in the laboratory to analyze these technologies. So this is the ELMA board. Uh, it's based on the SIM Trace 2, which is a open hardware project. And it's specifically designed for the SIM technologies implemented in the cellular phones of the GSM uh, network. So the idea of the SIM Trace 2 is that you, you can sniff or emulate traffic using the SIM adapter on the board or using the USB cable connect to the client in the computer. Uh, on the other hand, the ELMA board is specifically designed using adapter, flexible adapters on both ends, but also it has the capability to implement the USB to fit the board or to analyze the traffic between the terminal or on the EMV car. Also, it's capable to connect to a server implementing the Wi-Fi connectivity using the ESP32. And it helps us a lot in the laboratory to understand the protocol and to understand the features in the EMV MV cards. These are some of the characteristics of the ELMA board. We have the USB-C connector, which basically is for, for flexibility also, we have the ESP32 uh, that we implemented for Wi-Fi connectivity to the server or to a external server, where we can send data from the board and process it, and after that, send it back to the board so the board can emulate it directly to a terminal. Of course, where we have different adapters to connect, like, for example, EMV cards or SIM cards. And we have different modes. Like they could be uh, sniffing modes, fuzzers, or uh, emulation, specifically for, for, a, for a task. Let me show you how it looks, a, a connection for the sniffing traffic. Um, we have the EMV card in one side, and we have the ELMA in the middle. And after that, we implement another connector with a physical, physical board that um, simulates a physical EMV card to the terminal, uh, which basically it sends the data through the ELMA and it simulates a, a transaction, let's say, for example. Basically, this idea is to sniff the traffic from the car to the terminal and read the responses from the, from the card. The idea of seeing the comments from the terminal and seeing the the response from the car is to analyze how they interact to each other. And after that, we can analyze um, the responses and to see if there is something weird uh, during this communication process. So let's analyze the ELMA toolset. ELMA has different capabilities in the client and also in the board. For example, we can use a sniffer or emulator depending on the task. Let's say, for example, that we want to sniff some traffic. We can run the sniffer, the sniffer uh, platform or the sniffer firmware. Or if we want to emulate something, we can use the emulator um, for that task specifically. Inside of the emulator, we have different features like mending in the middle, and the minute in the middle can alter the CVM order, basically the card holder verification method. Imagine that we have the list of the card holder verification method that in, the, in this list, uh, depending on the order, it could be the verification method. So we can change that uh, implementing this, this type of uh, minute in the middle emulation mode. Also, we can change the terminal comments. We can adapt the card response. 
but one of the most important parts is that we can modify any EMV tag value. This is to test the, the environment, basically. Also, we have APDU fuzzer is to send random data to the terminal or to the car to see if we can mm, break something, <laughs> right? Uh, of course, we have the, the piñata attack and, and, these, and these features, which is basically um, this presentation is based on. And above all of that, we have uh, the option to implement a relay. This means that, for example, we can have um, the ALMA board in one computer and even the physical card could be in another location. And we can extract data from that card implementing the client for, for this, for this ALMA, ALMA board. So the virtual smart card is the core of the ALMA technology. Basically, uh, I can relate it to a software emulator of a smart card, but you have the capabilities to connect physical card readers to your computer and move the data between these uh, virtual smart card readers, change the data, and send it back. Yeah, and it could be sending back over a relay, for example, or you can send it back locally to another device that is connected to, to the device. It's very easy to use it and we implement it a lot in the ELMA design. So after we analyze the APDU protocol and how we design the ELMA prototype or ELMA technology, uh, let me talk a little bit about this in our implementation to reset the pin retry counter in the EMV cards or um, fan cards, let's say. So, let's talk a little bit about what is the process in the protocol when a transaction starts in the terminal. Initially, uh, we have the card identification, after that we have the card holder verification, uh, and then we have the transaction authorization. So let's start with the card authentication. In this step, the terminal starts sending commands to list the applications. Basically, at this point, the terminal knows what kind of card you are using. Let's say it's a Visa, MasterCard, American Express, um, something else. So in the next uh, in the next step, it's going to be the card holder verification method. It's where the terminal is going to prompt to enter a PIN, or um, it's going to ask you to sign um, to sign in the terminal, or um, is it going is going to depend depending of, uh, of the terminal technology and of course comparing to the car technology. All this process is going to finish with the transaction authorization. In this part, um, the terminal sends all the data to the back end uh, to the financial institution. And the financial institutions or the financial institutions sends back the IRC, which basically is the authorization response code. And this is applied to the card, or, and of course, applied to the, to the transaction. So at this point, the transaction can, can go through, or it could be the client. It is going to depend in all of these, all of these forms. So let's focus in on the cardholder verification phase, which is one of the one of the important steps in this research. Um, do you know how many cardholder verification methods do we have in, to make a transaction, for example? So let's focus and read a little bit about how many of these verification methods um, implements in the terminal and the card when you're making a transaction. So we have a kind of list inside of the card that it tells the terminal what kind of verification methods is capable of 
and some of them are like no CVM required, um, signing the paper, um, plain dead spin by ICC, uh, plain dead spin and paper, um, also encrypted pin by ICC or encrypted pin by ICC and signature paper. And one of the most important is encrypted pin and is uh, verification online, which is one of the normal uh, verification when you are using an ATM, for example. The verification is encrypted pin and verify online all the time. So these are uh, some of the most common card verification methods that we use with the transactions. So let's analyze this uh, card response where we need to take a look at the CVM list, especially uh, putting attention to the 8E tag value. So the first step is to decode it, to see how it's um, how it's implemented or what kind of value the 8E uh, tag contains. So after we decode it, we can see the cardholder verification method list. Inside of the list, we have all the values, all the possibilities that the physical card has to verify a transaction. Specifically, I'm talking about the 8E EMV tag. If we split the values, we can understand them individually. So let's do that. So we have this list and we are going to separate each value to understand what exactly what exactly means. So we have encrypt, encrypted pin in the first row if the terminal supports CVM. The second row is encrypt, encrypted pin by ICC. And the third row is plain pin by ICC. And the next one is the sign and the last one is no CVM required. You can see this list is in order. Do you imagine what happened if I flip the values? Let's say if I put the 1F03 in the top of the list. That could be another attack or for another, another research. But let's say we're going to be focused on the plain pin by ICC. What this verification method does, what exactly it does is that you can verify a pin against the, the ICC. So for example, I want to verify a, a pin one, two, three, and four. So I can send this one, two, three, and four to the card implementing this command. And the EMV card has different possibilities to respond. Let's say if it is a, that's the right pin, it's going to be a 90 and 00, which is going to be the trail of the um, EMV card response. But also they have another options like C3, C2, which means there is a wrong pin, but you have two more attempts left. And after that it's going to be C3, C1, which means it's a wrong pin and one more attempt left. And C3, C0, which means wrong pin and no more attempts left. So, if you imagine, this is a counter, pin retry counter, which basically it counts how many attempts left inside of the ICC. So, if this counter goes to zero, that means that we don't have any more possibilities to, to attempt with another pin, which is a mechanism to protect against brute force attacks. So to be able to send these commands to the to the card or to the to the EMV card, first of course, the card has to support plain pin by ICC. And the another thing is if we go through the EMV flow chart, we can see that to send pins to the card, we need to go through the card authentication. And after that, we're going to be in the card holder verification. At this point is where is where we're able 
to send uh, comments to the card. So let's say that we start sending to check the retry pin counter. And at this point, the retry pin counter has three more attempts left to try different pins. So we start sending uh, the pin 0718 and we got a response back, which is uh, 63C2, which basically means it's a wrong pin. And we have two more attempts left. After we sent the last pin, which is going to be the 0720, we can notice that we got the 63Z0, which means the pin retry counter is equal to zero. That means that we don't have more attempts left and we are not able to try more, more pins. So here the question is, how can we reset this pin retry counter to three again? We have two common ways to reset the PRC or the pin retry counter. Mm -hmm. One of the most common is when you remember the pin and you can go to any ATM from the from the financial institution and um, when you insert the card to the ATM using the correct pin the ATM in internally is going to run the scripts specifically to do the card management and it's going to reset this PRC to, um, to the value that it has before. The another way to do it is uh, when the card contains the encryption key and the Mac key scripts inside of the card. So when the terminal uh, basically generates the application cryptogram and um, responds with the AR, ARQC basically for online approval, um, the financial institution is going to respond with the ARPC, which basically is for the approval or rejection of the transaction. But inside of this data, we are going to have the CSU, which basically is the car status update, uh, which contains some data that could update the, the car internally, uh, which could be a command to reset the PRC specifically. Let's imagine that we have a card and we already try three different pins. So we don't have any more attempts left in the EMV card. That means that we need to try to make a transaction to see if the, if the financial institution resets the pin retry counter. So how we can do this? We can try to make a transaction with no CVM required, or we can try to make a transaction uh, implementing the signature um, CVM. We can do this in different ways, but normally like the mobile POSs, many of them implement no CVM or signature CVM here in the United States. So the idea is that after generating the application cryptogram, and the financial institution returns the ARPC, we can verify if the pin retry counter is set to three, for example, or to five, depending on of the configuration and we can notice this in the last step of the transaction when the ARPC is applied to to the card after this step we can verify if the pin retry counter is set to the back uh, to the previous value which it should be 305 depending on of the implementation but of course this is a a inadequate implementation, a bad practice to do it. The best way to reset the pin retry counter is by using an ATM in the financial institution or, or by calling um, a representative from the bank, for example, uh, to assign a new pin to the card. And after they use that card in the ATM, they are going to reset the pin retry counter. But doing, doing this type of uh, reset after a transaction, it could be very dangerous. And uh, I'm going to show you why. So let's imagine that we have a normal ARC from the, from the bank, which basically I can see some 
some changes between each responses. So this one is a normal transaction when it didn't receive any order to change the pin retry counter. But in this slide, we can see a different, different bytes that I can relate it to, to the pin retry counter basically, to change it to the, to the previous value. So to be able to use the pinet attack, the cat has to implement two different features. One is the plain pin by IEC card holder verification method, and also the pin retry reset by the user when the PRC is zero. With these two characteristics, we can run the pinet attack against the EMV card. And we are going to uh, show you how I did my setup to, to do this and to run this pinata attack. To run the pinata attack, we need to make a special Elma setup um, project. For this specific case, I'm going to use the GPD Pocket 2, a small computer or pocket computer. It's uh, one of the most powerful devices in, in this size specifically to do different things. But I mean, you can use any, any other device that you have uh, available. To, to this type of, of setup. Also, uh, we're going to use a cheapest card reader that you can find on the internet, is the SCR3310, which basically what it's going to do is we're going to extract the original EMV data from this reader. So our card, our financial card, is going to be inserted in this reader. So basically with the pocket, a computer we're going to start start reading the card and we are going to process the data and after that we're going to send it send it to the Elma board. So also we're going to need the Elma board of course and we're going to need the sum up payment system. Basically it's a it's a payment system that you can that you can run implement in a cellular phone. So you have an application and you can you can make payments directly to this to this device. The idea to have this device is to, to be able to control the payment environment, basically. So the idea of the Elma at this point is going to simulate a real EMV card to sum up, but it's going to process the data that we are going to extract from the card reader, basically. Because we're going to use a mobile payment system and we are going to have this application for the sum up uh, payment system in our cellular phone, we need to implement the auto clicker application. The auto clicker, basically what it's going to do is going to play an important role to make or to help us to automatize uh, different, different tasks. For example, let's say that we try three different pins and we need to make a new transaction to reset the pin retry counter. So the auto clicker is going to do that automatically for us. So that's one of the most important parts in this, in this pinata. So this is my setup. I have the, the pocket two basically in the middle. We have the card reader SCR3010 where, uh, from where we are going to extract the data, the original data from the car. Nerd side, we have the Elma board connected by USB. This could be a relay over the internet, but for this for this demo, we are using uh, locally locally connection. And the Elma is going to simulate the transaction, implementing the, the connector to the sum up. So when the sum up sends the first command, Elma is going to process it. It's going to send it to the client in the pocket computer, and the pocket is going to send the last command. To the to the card, uh, what's uh, what's going to do in the client side is is going to start checking for some kind of flags. Let's say if I activate the pinata attack, it's going to detect when we are going to be in the verification mode, and after that we are going to start making the brute force attack against the pins. After we have a zero on the pin retry counter, we are going to start a new transaction to reset this pin retry counter. And after we have another three attempts 
in the counter, we are going to start the process again to make the brute force attack against this EMV card. Internally in the computer is going to be running a virtual card reader which is going to expect data from the card reader or the physical reader and it's going to send this data to the Elma board. Basically it's to process the data internally and after that to present this data to a terminal. The idea of implementing virtual card reader is to be able basically to emulate a, a card reader but simultaneously to be able to modify data in real time. To visualize the pinata attack, so what it does basically is after a transaction, it checks if the plain pin by ICC verification method is available. If it is, it checks the pin try counter. If it is greater than, than zero, means that we have possibilities to make a brute force attack. If we couldn't find a pin, basically we repeat this cycle until until we get the correct pin. So uh, mentioning this, we can go directly to the demo slide. So first I'm going to run the client software to start to make a first the first transaction. Uh, here is the where the clicker is very handy. So it's going to help help a lot with all the transactions that we are going to need. After we we made the first transaction, we're going to check the pin retry counter to see if it's greater than zero. If it is, we're going to try to brute force uh, the pin implementing a list of possible possible pins to try. If, if we couldn't find a correct pin, we're going to make a new transaction to reset the pin retry counter. And after we reset it, we try to make a brute force attack against against the EMV card. If we couldn't find, we re repeat this cycle until we we are able to, to find the correct pin. And in this, in this last try, we find, uh, we'll be able to find the correct pin. And it's the 0722, which basically is uh, the pin that we can use to make a transaction with the card, basically. Uh, at this point, we can use this card in the ATM or to make a purchase in any store, implementing implementing the the correct pin. I want to say thank you to these people. They helped me a lot in this research, especially the MetaBase Q team for all the details and support. And thank you for being part of DEFCON 29. Hope you guys keep enjoying this event.